The Truth About Goblins Chapter 48 One o'clock snuck up on Annie as she rushed to finish her letter. She knew she had to get going if she didn't want to be left behind, especially now that the others had already left for the gate. Staring at the letter, a mess of scratched-out sentences and lopsided words, she sighed. It sounded awkward when she read it over, but at least it was clear. Everything she needed to say was there. She scribbled her name at the bottom and stuffed it in a yellowed envelope. Hopefully there would be no one at the tea shop, and she could just drop it off with no questions asked. If she accidentally bumped into Kit or Safira, she had a feeling they would convince her to stay. And as much as she felt sorry for leaving, Annie knew she didn't have a choice. Not if she wanted things to change. After writing their names on the envelope, she stashed it in her backpack and rose from the table. She wasn't angry with either of them. She had never been angry, really. And now that she was leaving, Annie felt that she owed them both an apology. She didn't even care about the secret. Not anymore. Maybe when they read the letter, they would understand. She was confident that Zafira would, in any case. Kit would probably take some convincing, but there was no point in worrying about it now. With a rushed goodbye to the innkeeper, Annie slipped out the door. The west gate wasn't too far from where she was staying, but since she had to swing by the tea shop first, she picked up the pace. She wondered what Redstone Market would be like. Was it as busy as this one? Was the whole first floor occupied by shops? Or was it less of a market and more of a town? Spurred by curiosity, she walked a little faster. The rest of the group wasn't going to wait for her. Hey! A shrill voice rose above the crowd. Annie hesitated, thinking the call may have been directed to her. But she kept her eyes on the ground and kept going. Hey! came the voice again. Hey you! Silver hair! Wait! She sighed and turned around. It was only a moment before she caught sight of a familiar face. Shady! Annie stared at the girl as she pushed her way through the crowd. What are you doing here? She skidded to a stop. No time! You gotta come! I'll explain on the way! She tried pulling her into action, but Annie stayed where she was. Hurry! But why? She was still focused on her journey. What's going on? Ain't no time, said Shady. You asked us to find Donovan, and we found him all right, but Grim got to him first. Wait, what? Shady was talking so fast she could hardly understand her. You found Donovan? And what did you say about Grim? Hurry, she said, still pulling on her wrist. We have to go, now. But she wasn't moving. Go get someone else. This isn't any of my business. Can't you get Kit or Timothy? I tried to looking for someone else, but you's the only one around. Annie cast a longing glance towards the west gate. If she didn't get there on time, the group wouldn't wait for her, and she would have to change plans again. Donovan wasn't her problem. The whole thing was for Timothy to deal with. It wasn't her son. This is not my daughter. She stopped. She saw them only a moment. The faces from the morgue, the parents she had left behind, shaking their heads, turning away. Only they hadn't turned away, had they? Annie was the one who had left them there. She was the one who had said no. These aren't my parents. She was the one who had walked away. And going to Redstone wouldn't change that. What was she running from? We have to go! Shady was still trying to pull her forward. You'll let him get away! It was easier to walk away. It would have been harder to feel, to care. 
she had chosen not to. But that was it, wasn't it? Goblins could feel they could get hurt just like everyone else. Only they had a choice. She had a choice, like her real parents did. The choice to walk away. Her feet moved all on their own, away from the gate, away from Redstone. She wasn't going to make the same mistake. Shady led the way as fast as she could. Got a lock on Donovan's place, but right as soon as we did, that Grim reared out of nowhere and made his way in. And boy, that magician. They scurried over a pile of crates and down an alleyway. He means business, he did. Something's really, really not right, I'm telling ya. Was Grim after the baby? After what happened to Kit, Annie didn't doubt it. She had to stop him. Or she had to try, at least. For Timothy. For herself. There, pointed Shady, breathless. Over that carpet shop. Annie didn't wait. She entered the store, searching the room for the staircase that led to the second floor. The owner was nowhere to be seen, but she found the stairs within seconds. With Shady at her heels, she bounded up the steps. She stopped at the door. The lock was broken. Experience told her not to open it, that there wasn't anything good on the other side of that door. But Shady was right behind her, and if what she said was true, there was a chance that Donovan was waiting inside. Annie pushed the door open. It was another apartment, not too lavish, not too modest, hardly remarkable. Annie entered carefully, her apprehension growing with each step. Where's Donovan? she whispered. Before either of them could say another word, they stopped. A strange sound drifted into the room from another open door. Annie turned towards it. She saw a leg, motionless, pass the next doorway. She recognized the sound. Where are you going? Shady grabbed her arm. This ain't right, boss, I'm telling you. Annie shook her off. You hear it too, right? It's the baby. As she inched closer to the entryway, the cries became more distinct. The sound was so weak, desperate. She was drawn to it. Boss? Shady followed, reluctant. Maybe we ought to go back. But Annie didn't hear her. Each step brought her closer. The room opened up before her. She saw the bed, the curtains, the crib. She saw the leg, the body, the stain on the carpet, the arm outstretched towards the crib. She staggered back, leaning against the doorway as her eyes passed over the dead body. Donovan? She looked to Shady, frozen in place. Is it... is this him? Shady said nothing in reply, eyes wide. Annie looked towards the body, following the dead man's outstretched hand. She heard the crying. And then she released her grip on the doorframe and stepped towards the crib. Boss! Shady watched, refusing to come any closer. I don't think that's a good idea. It's the baby! She kept her eyes on the crib, draped in a soft white canopy. The baby was shrieking now, sending shivers up her spine as the cries filled the room. With shaking hands, she pulled back the canopy. Boss! The crying stopped. Annie held her breath and looked inside. The baby was swaddled, wrapped in a yellow blanket. It was coming undone. The baby's hands poked out from either side as it pulled the blanket away from its face. Annie only stared. Its skin was scaly, its eyes a vicious yellow. 
Its nose, small as it was, did not belong to a human. This was not Timothy's child. It's a goblin. Alarmed, Shady ran to the crib. We're too late. Pounding on the door downstairs, followed by gruff voices. Annie couldn't make out the words, but Shady knew what it meant. Meddlers! Quick, boss, we gotta scram! She bolted across the room to an open window, preparing to drop through to the other side. Close on her tail, Annie followed. But as the goblin baby began to cry again, she turned on her heel and doubled back to the crib. What do you think you're doing? exclaimed Shady. Leave it! They'll kill him! said Annie, reaching into the crib as the voices grew louder. The door wasn't locked. The Arbiters would be inside within seconds. With the baby in her arms, she ran to the window, following Shady as she dropped down outside. The goblin, now silent, wrapped its stubby arms around her neck, leaving Annie with the use of both hands as she dismounted onto the roof. She could hear the arbiters yelling in the room above before she even landed. Quick as ever, she rolled off the roof and jumped onto the street. Come on, said Shady, breaking into a sprint. They're after us, boss. A glance over her shoulder and Annie knew she was right. The arbiters were just behind them, with one guard already through the window. She turned her gaze ahead and ran. They dodged and ducked through the busy crowd, slipping past strangers as they fought to put some distance between themselves and the Arbiters. Annie could hear people yelling behind her, but she didn't dare look back a second time. She didn't want to think about what would happen if they were caught. But the crowds were thinning, their advantage fading as they continued down the streets. Shady saw this and changed direction. Left! she yelled, turning so quickly that Annie nearly lost sight of her. She turned and followed her down another street, hoping that Shady knew what she was doing. Annie almost ran into her when she entered the alley, realizing that Shady had come to a stop. Fearful of their pursuers, she was about to push past her when she saw another group of arbiters not too far ahead. We're cornered, she exclaimed. What do we do? She whirled around, hoping to find another street or alleyway to duck into. But when she turned her head back to look at Shady, the girl was gone. She continued staring, stunned. Where did she go? Someone grabbed her arm. She staggered backwards off the street and into a tangle of bushes. And then she landed on the ground with a thud. Ow! What was... Shh! A young boy peered through the bushes, watching as the arbiters on the street ran right by their hiding place. All three of them, now safely concealed, said nothing, but waited until the guards were far from sight before speaking again. Boy, Jay, you sneaker! Shady crawled up beside him and peeked through the leaves. Almost had us, those meddlers. You sure pulled us out of the water, Captain. Forget the meddlers, said Jay, turning to Annie. He eyed the bundle in her arms. Did you get the baby? Uh, she bit her lip. Not exactly. He watched as the goblin in her arms turned its head to look at him. His shoulders slumped the moment he saw its large yellow eyes. No good, he said. The magician beat us to it. Then we've got to go after him, said Annie. Do you know where he went? The old tower, said Jay, already on his feet. Raven's keeping an eye on him, but we gotta hurry. No telling where he might disappear to. On it, said Annie, leaping into action. Shady, find Timothy. Tell him where we're going. She poked her head out of the bushes and checked for arbiters, disappearing down the street just a few seconds later. You heard her. Jay turned to Shady. Look for the tall guy and let the others know what's going on. 
She watched as he dived onto the street. But Captain, I want to come too. Tell the murder to keep an eye on the gates, he called, already after Annie. No one comes or goes without us knowing. The murder knows all, sees all, said Shady, running the opposite direction. Good luck, Jay. Halfway down the street, he glanced over his shoulder. Shady was already gone, and he could see Annie up ahead. He picked up the pace until he was running beside her. You sure he's at the tower? she said. Sure, I'm sure. I saw him on his way, and Ravens followed him, so she'll know if he's still there. It didn't take long for them to arrive at the tower. Annie slowed her sprint as it came into view, intimidated by the sight. But the hesitation passed before they reached the door. Before they grabbed the handle, the door opened all on its own. He's inside, hissed Raven. Come away, quickly. She let them inside. Where is he? said Annie, looking around the room. He's vanished, said Raven. It can only mean he's attempting to make his way above ground through use of the tower, but the stairs are concealed. I cannot find them. I know where they are, said Annie, heading for the shelf in the back. Holding the goblin in one arm, she grabbed the shelf with her free hand and pulled. It didn't move. Here, she said, thrusting the baby into Raven's arms. The girl held the bundle awkwardly, cringing as it began to squeal. What is this? She stood alongside her brother as Annie pulled the shelf away from the wall. Why? I'll explain later said Annie, grunting as she gave the shelf a final heave. Jay saw a crystal ball rolling off its surface and jumped to catch it. Look out, he said, saving it just before it crashed to the floor. Watch what you're doing. Annie ignored him as the shelf swung from its place, revealing the hidden door. Her hands were on the handle in an instant, and to her surprise, it opened with a single tug. Someone had forgotten to lock it. Raven stared at the door. How did you know of that passage? Been here before, said Annie, taking back the crying baby. The goblin went silent as it rested its head on her shoulder. There's a tunnel down there and a staircase. I think it goes above ground. She turned and made her way back to the dark doorway. You're going after him, said Jay. Just like that? But she was already gone, her figure swallowed up by the darkness of the cellar. Raven and Jay stood still, saying nothing. It soon became clear that she wasn't coming back. With a long sigh, Jay stepped forward and headed for the staircase. Where are you going? said Raven. Where do you think? He glanced over his shoulder before entering the passage. I'm going with her. After the magician. She opened her mouth to say more, but he had already turned his back on her and disappeared down the steps. Defeated, she followed her brother, scanning the strange shop one last time before entering the passage and closing the door behind her. Once it was shut, the shelf started moving scraping against the floor as it returned to its place in front of the cellar door. And then the shop was silent. There was no sound, no sign that anyone had entered or left the room. Leaving nothing behind of their visit, the three kids were now deep into the cellar, on their way back to the world above. <laughs> Hey, hi, I'm your narrator, Miranda Eastwood, also the author of The Truth About Goblins. If you liked this chapter, remember to add, follow, or subscribe to this channel so you can hear the next one. And if you didn't like this chapter, <laughs> oh well, I can't really do anything about that. In any case, I just thought I'd let you know about my Patreon. You can check it out if you'd like to throw some support my way. It would mean a lot to me. 
Not to mention there's loads of extra exclusive content that I only post on Patreon. While I'm at it, I'll mention that The Truth About Goblins is now available as a complete audiobook, and you can get it wherever you get your audiobooks. Thanks for listening. <laughs>